Hello fabulous friends. Uh, today I'm going to show you the Tarot Erotica by Lori Walls. And um, this deck was published in 1999 and it is out of print. Um, it's not like super rare to find but it's not very common either. And when you do find it it's kind of expensive. Um, I got lucky and I found uh, uh, two copies actually. For relatively cheap I think they were like 60 70 bucks and I've seen this deck go for much much more than that so um so I was lucky and I'm very happy um so um the tarot erotica um I I got this because I was looking for an erotic tarot deck and there are a few um there's the Decameron and the Manara and uh, there is the um, Sensual Wicca Tarot and um, the Tarot of Sex Magic or Sexual Magic, I think. Um, and those four are um, still in print, still on the market. They're very, very common, easy to find. Um, but um, I wasn't, wasn't really drawn to any of those. Um, some of them were kind of weird. Um, but, um, but when I saw this, um, something about it resonated with me. Um, for one, because it feels more balanced as far as male and female energies, and as well as, um, uh, heterosexual and, um, gay, um, uh, sex. Uh, so, so that, I just really love that, and I love that, um, there's lots of dicks. It doesn't shy away from male full frontal nudity, which a lot of um, deck creators do. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why people are afraid of penises, but um, we see boobs everywhere. We see naked women all over tarot, and it's no big deal. But, you know, once we see um, a penis, you know, people freak out. Um, but this deck doesn't. Um, it, uh, let's see. Terra Erotica by Lori Walls. Um, it was distributed by QED Games. Printed and packaged in Canada. So yeah. <clears throat> um, so here is the little white book. Oh, and as you see, this box, which is also the back of the cards, has a very suggestive flower with um, a very phallic looking pistol. But the Little White Book is decent. Um, there's enough information for each card. It gives you a little summary as well as upright and reverse meanings and a preemptory, which I'm not sure what that means. But, um, but yeah, I mean, every card, there's 46, 47 pages. You know, it's a decent Little White Book. I mean, I've seen better and I've seen worse. So, um, so here is the deck. Is the back, and um, uh, cardstock is um, okay. I mean, it's not not super flimsy and it's not super thick. Um, we'll see how well it holds up. So um, here is the. Ace of Wands, or, or Rods, as they're called. Here, um, and as you see, you know, we get full frontal male nudity right away, which I love. Um, so, yeah, and uh, it does have, you know, the big border um, with uh, multiple languages, sort of like Los Carabeo. And, you know, I'm not a fan of huge borders. I actually hate them. Um, but... I'm okay with this. Um, I think that borderless it would look better. I think having that artwork stand out more would be much more effective. But, um, but you know, I'm okay with it, considering that it's a rare out of print deck and um, it's an erotic deck that, that I actually like. The cards, the size of the cards is, um, is small. They're actually, since I just did a video on playing cards, it's um, like, you know, just 
just bigger than a uh, playing card deck. So it's not a, a U.S. game size, standard tarot size at all. So it's small, and then it has huge borders, so the artwork is kind of small. But, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay with it. So anyway, enough staring at this guy's penis. There's plenty more to go. <laughs> and the two. And the two of rods I absolutely love you know it's two men two penises just the symbolism is there it's just it's just gorgeous love it and then the three there's some sort of um orgy or something going on here three and then four. The ram's head and the dove. Oh. And then the five. And as you can see, there is a lot of detail in some of these cards, which is why I wish it was bigger and I wish it was borderless. And if anybody knows how to find Lori Walls, um, we need to find her and tell her this deck needs to be republished and it needs to be full size. Please. <laughs> Please. I mean, really. And then here is the six. There's an interesting scene going on here with all these people. Sorry, my finger's in the way. Seven. Eight. A pyramid and some birds and stuff. And an egg. Interesting. And I'm going to have to look through the book some more and um, try to understand what some of these images mean, what she's going for here. But, um, but I mean... I like them. They're just not, they're not RD, RWS uh, based at all. And it's not really based on anything else I've seen. Um, oh, I love this. I like, I like the man, the naked man dancing in the middle surrounded by a circle of other naked men with their rods. I mean, <laughs> that's just, I love it. I love it. And then the 10, which is, uh, very interesting. It's almost sort of forming a gate, like a, what is it called, a Tori gate, like the Shintos use. Sort of, it sort of reminds me of that. And then here is the page. And again, two men. I mean, obviously the one guy is sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe some kind of authority, or, you know, he is the the dominant one, and then the other guy on the bottom, who is sort of like his little submissive servant, it looks like. Yeah. And then here is the knight. I like the heart on the shield, with a penis coming off of it. Queen. And all the phalluses. Look at all the penises in the background. Um, yeah. The king is like that too. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. And now we're into the cups. And here is the Ace of Cups. And I like that the aces actually have people on them instead of, you know, a hand holding an object, which is fine. I mean, I don't mind the hand holding the object, and that alone um, has a lot of meaning to it. But I like I like the people and the aces. Um, I don't know. It just adds something. And um, so far, they're getting the, uh, the gender associations correct. 
you know, the wands are male, and then the cups are female. Looks like there's rain or something going on there, too. Yeah. And then, just as the, um, the two of wands was two males, the two of cups is um, two females with their... Um, Oh, interesting. One cup has a flower, and then the other cup has, like, uh, two dolphins or something on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's interesting. Yeah. And then the three, which is, you know, of course, that is very RWS, for sure. Three women with their drinks in hand celebrating. Except in the RWS, they're not naked. <laughs> they should be. I mean, why not? I would like to see all the characters in the RWS naked. What if somebody did that? Somebody should do that. The naked RWS. Maybe one day. Um, and this is the four. Which is an interesting scene. It looks like... She is either turning him away or she's disappointed that he can't perform sexually or maybe I mean the spotlight is on him I think maybe he he just wants to jerk off he doesn't want to have you know intercourse but I like the one hand pointing up towards the cups yeah, there's a lot going on here and the staircase is in the background it's an interesting card and then the, um, the five, which, um, is two guys fucking on the ground. Some of the cups are spilled over. And then the six is two women. See, and that's what I love. I love that there are so many same-sex couples and, um, not only that, I mean, there are also, like, cards with multiple people, like, you know, um, thruples, as they say, which are three or more. Yeah, that's cool. There's got, there's got some sort of, there's two bowls on their bed, like, one of them has some sort of substance in it, and the other one has some scrolls. Like, um, there's the scrolls, and then I don't know what's in there, it looks like sand or something? I don't know. I don't know. But those are the other two cups, because the, the four are along the bedpost headboard. Yeah. And then here is the seven. Oh, she's quite lovely as the, uh, the waterfall rushes over her. That's pretty. And then the eight. Okay, okay. This is one of the weird cards. There are not many in this deck, but this one, <laughs> this one makes some people uncomfortable, and I, I can understand why. Um, I don't really know how I feel about it as far as, like, what it would mean in a reading, but a little bit of a bestiality, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this woman wants to have sex with this horse, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not offended by it. I just think it's weird, and I don't really know <laughs> what it means. So that's one of those I'll have to look in the book and see what she has to say. Um, and then um, Cups, there's this sexy scene of this woman giving this guy a blowjob. And it looks like, yes, along the bottom here are the um, symbols of the zodiac. And then the ten. This uh, candelabra with uh, an orgy happening on the bottom, it looks like. And the page, 
and a female page, actually, two female pages, which is nice. I always like seeing that. It makes the courts more balanced, so it's not all male energy. That's pretty, you know. They're pretty. And then here is the knights. The queen. Some mer people going on here, it looks like. Very strange looking tails. Very long merman tails. And then the king. Okay. And then I'll add the swords. And here is the ace. Very fiery. Um, she did switch of the elements in this deck. Um, uh, cups are, are, are still water because, actually, I'll, sh I'll look it in the book just to verify. Yes, cups are water. Oh, and of course, and she divided the suits into um, seasons, too. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, so rods are wands are the uh, element of earth and spring, which is different from, you know, what we're used to. Um, wands are usually fire. Cups are water in summer. Swords are fire and autumn. And and um, pentacles, which in this deck are called stars. I don't understand why you couldn't call them pentacles or coins, but they are uh, winter and uh, the element of air. So the el elemental associations are different, which is which is fine. I don't think that's going to matter much to me. But yeah, so there's the Ace of Swords. And then there's the Two, which is very up close and personal, very detailed. Um, and again, I like that the Twos have two up, up close of two people having sex. And, um, and they're Two Swords. And then here are the, is the three. Interesting. Some chains, bondage kind of thing going on here. I don't know. And there's the four. This looks very, um, very nightmarish, which is usually what swords are, is sort of mental anguish and stuff like that. So this sort of looks like that, I think. Oh. And the five. Now there's some bondage gear. That guy is totally wearing a harness. Which is interesting to see in a deck from 1999. I mean, harnesses are very common now. I mean, gay men everywhere own harnesses and wear them at every pride event so they're everywhere but you know it's kind of interesting to see it here which is probably in a more bdsm context which is how it originated obviously um and then here is the six <clears throat> it's very pretty it's like the cityscape behind her that's kind of cool Here's the seven. It's a desert. And here is the eight. And those looks the stairs look similar to others in earlier cards. And there's definitely some sort of conflict going on there. And the nine. <clears throat> I'm not sure what's going on here. There's a lot of fire. Um, there's two guys and a girl. Maybe they're 
I don't know if they're fighting over her or they're protecting her because in the background there's a bunch of hooded figures, like dark mysterious hooded figures, so I don't know what that means, but uh, that's interesting. And then here is the 10. Oh wow, oh wow. Check that out. I don't know if you, how well you can see. That's the problem with these small cards is that there's so many details, but then I can't really get them on camera. Um, but this, uh, wow, there's actually a lot more going on in this than I realized. This person in the middle here, um, that person has multiple breasts, like the, um, like the, the, um, um, the hell's her name? The statue there, the fountain. Um, is it Artemis? I think it's Artemis or Diana um, with the multiple breasts. Um, there was an ancient Roman or Greek statue. And then someone later in Italy uh, recreated it as a fountain. So then you can see like the jets of water streaming from her breasts, which is pretty wild and very cool. But anyway, this figure has the multiple, the rows of multiple breasts like that. And there's also, it also appears that there is a phallus, a penis emerging from her, like a very elongated penis for some reason. But, um, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It's pretty wild. All right. Here's the page. Interesting that there's um, a spade. I did I did see that in some other cards too. That there are um, playing card pips, like um, you know, hidden in the card. Although that's not very hidden, but you know what I mean. Here's the knight. That's pretty wild. There is a caduceus, which is the, uh, the staff of Hermes in the background. And then the queen. There's a uh, Oh, interesting. All right, so here's the here's the queen, and then you can see this these sort of shadow clones of her or something. I mean, it's very clearly the same person, but uh, yeah. And then she's got one sword pointing towards this. I don't know, is that a cauldron? Yeah, some sort of wood burning stove or something. Yeah, it's interesting. And then here is the king, and I love this king because he's holding his cock, and I think that's the only card in this deck that I remember where the guy is holding his cock. I mean, I don't understand why. We need more masturbation in tarot cards. Please, please. But yeah, I mean, the king of swords, I mean, you know, that makes sense. <clears throat> um, wands. Wands, to me, wands are my favorite suit, and to me they are the... Um, the most phallic suit, um, but swords are also quite phallic, but yeah, that king is, uh, totally masturbating. Um, okay, and now we're on to stars, which is, you know, pentacles. Um, so here is, uh, the ace. It's very dark. I mean, the figure is very dark. There's a lot of light. And then, of course, there's more astrological symbols around her. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the two, which I love. I love that the two is the twos are all couples. <clears throat> but the star shapes they use on here are interesting. They remind me of like hex signs, like Dutch hex signs, or something similar to that. Um. 
Looks like it might be a straight couple. Yeah, because I think the more muscular guy is a guy. And then this person with the painted nails is probably a woman. But, you know, it might not be. <clears throat> so yeah, the twos. Um, there, are t there are two heterosexual couples and then a gay male couple and then a lesbian couple. Those are what we have for the twos. Oh, and this is interesting. This is the three, and there is a uh, statue of an angel figure, uh, a fountain it looks like, and then there's the artist or someone down at the bottom there looking at it. Yeah. <clears throat> And then the uh, four, which is, uh, I don't know, she's wearing a corset. She's got some sort of um, chastity belt. That's what it looks like, a chastity belt. Um, she doesn't look very happy, so I don't know what this means. But the, 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 I don't know, the fact that, that, that she calls it stars instead of pentacles is kind of weird to me, but it's fine. Um... But the fact that she uses different types of star shapes is interesting. Again, these look these still look like hex signs to me. Maybe that's what she was going for, I don't know. Um, here's the five. That guy. And the woman behind him. See, and then this one, she uses actual pentacles or pentagrams. For the stars. Each of them has a symbol inside, which is interesting. But, um, I mean, I don't know why she couldn't do that throughout the whole thing. I mean, it would have been more cohesive, but that's okay. Whatever. The image is interesting. Six. Such interesting figures. I like all the, the chains and the harnesses and bondage gear and interesting uh, attire and here is the seven and uh, there's this woman who's straddling this um, rock formation in a cave or something um, it looks like uh, it looks very similar to the um, I think it's the ace of wands and the Decameron there's a woman hugging a giant phallus in the same exact position. Um, there's another deck um, that's not published yet. There's a Kickstarter one, the Divine Masculine deck, which I think has a card like that too, where, but it's a guy hugging um, a, a, a giant dick. Um, so this seems to be a recurring theme in these erotic decks. A person hugging, you know, some sort of, I mean, it's not a dick in this, but, I mean, she's straddling it, so it's obviously meant to be phallic. And then here is the eight, and, uh, this person, this woman has a tattoo, and I don't know what this guy is, is doing, or my, maybe, is it a tattoo or is it paint? Because it looks like there's a palette down there too, so maybe he's painting her? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, that's interesting. And again, we have the stairs and the pyramid in the background. That's a recurring theme throughout this deck. And then here is the nine. Um, and this card makes some people uncomfortable too, because there's a child in it. It's not a pedophile card. It's not portraying sex. I think it's supposed to be like a mother uh, protecting her child or an inner child. I mean, but I don't think it's meant to be sex with a child. I mean, you know, the, the, the fact that there was a bestiality card is bad enough, but I don't think that she would have put a, a pedophile card in her deck. And I don't think that th that, that would have been allowed. I think that that would have, uh, you know, child pornography but yeah 
I, I mean, I understand some people find this uncomfortable, but I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think there's anything um, bad about it. And you have to remember, I mean, this is an erotic deck, but not everyone is having sex. There are people doing things who are naked, but they're not necessarily having sex. So this is an example of that. So yeah, I'm not uncomfortable with that at all. I think it's kind of uh, beautiful, actually. And then here is the 10. Oh, this is nice. There's this, I don't know, this sort of this celebration, festival, uh, people are, they're not having sex, but they're sort of massaging each other and dancing around each other. Um, a very pretty scene, and I like that tree or whatever it is in the background with the orbs on it. It's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, this deck needs to be re-released in a full size. I think that this artwork would just be absolutely stunning in a full size deck. Um, so here is the page. And the night. I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like there's a person sitting on top of another person, but they're sort of joined together. Oh, oh, he's wearing he's wearing a helmet. Oh, he, oh yeah, he's totally eating her out. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ladies need to get some head too. Absolutely. Hmm. And the queen. I don't understand this rabbit-faced figure. I don't get what that means, but... Okay. That, that, that queen, though, she's beautiful. Look at how elegant she floats through the air. Just gorgeous. And then the king. And again, there's another animal person, a bird figure got a human body and arms, but it also has the head and wings of a bird. I don't know. I'm going to have to read the book and see if it tells me anything. Alright, so those are the minors, and now we are doing the major arcana. Um, most people do it the other way around, and normally I would too, but this was the order that the cards came in, and that's the way I'm showing them to you. <coughs> so, on to the major arcana. So, um, here is the Fool, and I love this Fool card, and again, you know, we have animal-faced people for some reason, which is probably symbolic of something, but, um, I think this card is absolutely beautiful, um, and in fact, it is strikingly similar to the, um, the Lover's card in the Robin Wood Tarot, and I'll show it to you. I don't have a physical copy of the Robin Wood Tarot, but I have the app. See? There's an app. And then I will show you the uh, lovers. So here is the oh, stupid glare. Lovers. Oh, maybe I can get a good angle. Oh, there we go. Lovers and the Robin Wood Tarot. They're completely nude. Um, it is probably my favorite lovers card. It's really the only card in the deck that I like. Um, I don't like some of the art choices in the Robin Wood Tarot, but I love this Lover's card. It's really my favorite. And then, and of course we see this. It's very, it's similar. I mean, you know, obviously they're not the same, but I like the, the naked couple. So, yeah, that is the Fool. And interesting that there is a couple on the Fool card. I've never seen that before. It's always an individual, so um, that's pretty unique. If you, if, if anyone out there knows any other uh, decks that have a fool card with more than one person, um, let me know. I just had a realization. The man is wearing a dog mask, so he is the dog in the in the uh, the fool card. 
and then you know the woman is holding the rose except it's a red rose instead of a white one and she has a um butterfly mask um and in some fool cards the the fool is you know chasing after a butterfly or you know fascinated by it as he walks off the cliff so um i think that's supposed to represent that but um yeah i love that i love it and uh the magician I like it. It's got all the tools there. Lots of detail. There is a, um, a Kabbalah tree of life in the background. And then here is the priestess. <clears throat> Excuse me. She has a some sort of phallic wand, like very clearly phallic, in one hand, and then she has a skull chalice in the other. So you can see the uh, skull chalice, and then there's the phallic wand there. Um, and then she has a big bouffant hairdo. <laughs> And um, she's standing on, like, the all-seeing eye, it looks like, something like that. And then uh, the Empress, which is um, interesting. The symbolism is interesting. Um, she's, she appears to be pregnant, which I'm sure she is, because that's very, very traditional for the Empress. Um, but then at the bottom you see that she sort of... Um, she's got, like, knitting needles in her hand, and then she's sort of knitting these, this couple having sex on the bottom, which uh, is very, very interesting. I'm kind of intrigued by that. And then the Emperor, um, who is also sort of uh, ma manipulating people but with a machine he's got a lever in his hand and there's uh, all sorts of gears and cogs and stuff and then there's this uh, couple down at the bottom and and a, a pomegranate which is very interesting because usually <clears throat> the pomegranate is associated with the priestess um but the pomegranate is also um, known for, you know, it's seeds, because you eat the seeds, and I think, um, seeds are very masculine, which is the association that I, uh, come up with. I find it interesting to, uh, some of the dicks in this deck are, are strange looking. I mean, they're not, they're not, like, bad as Pamela Coleman Smith's penises in, in her, deck i mean they're in her deck they're barely penises it's like a smudge <laughs> i mean these are, at least resemble penises but like his penis is very limp and it's hanging in a very strange way um i think seeing the emperor erect would be kind of cool um i have not seen that in any any deck yet but um yeah emperor um Hierophant, who is getting ready to take this woman. There are... There's a candelabra. Oh no, it's a menorah. There's a menorah. There's um, some sort of sphere with wings that looks Egyptian. There is a four-armed deity that looks like Shiva or something. And then there is a cross with the two keys. Um, and then there is, um, the fish. Okay, I'll show you all this stuff. I don't know how well it's going to show on camera, but there is the, um, the cross with the keys. And then behind there is the forearm deity, which you can't see. I mean, it's just tiny. And then the other side, there's the menorah. And then there's that winged orb thing. And then between his left is the, um... The Jesus fish, which I can't remember what it's called right now. 
Yeah. And then the lovers, which is a masquerade, which is kind of cool. Just dancing together while everyone watches. <laughs> it's like a scene out of a movie. Except they're both pantsless. <laughs> um, chariot. And the uh, sphinxes or whatever those creatures are supposed to be. <clears throat> you know, the black one and the white one. <coughs> They're interesting. There's some sort of interaction between the two, like they're like they're fighting or something. I don't know. Yeah, interesting chariot card. And then strength. And I found this interesting because okay, there's you know a woman holding a man or something, and he looks like he's thinking or something. Oh no, he's holding her hand. But um. Her hat that she's wearing has that um, that brim that that resembles the um, the lemniscate, the infinity symbol, and usually that's associated with the uh, the magician. Um, so yeah, I found that interesting. Um, and then like from her hat, there's sort of these uh, I don't know streamers or uh, maybe some sort of plants or something. I don't know what they are. But um, I think it's interesting. I mean, she is obviously the the woman in the figure and then the guy, I guess, is representing the lion. I don't know. Yeah, there's no animal in this picture. Um, there are two moons in the background. There's a dark one and a light one. Well, I mean, of course, and of course the sides of her hat are also dark and light, so that's kind of interesting. The other strength and then the hermit um and i actually really like this hermit um you know it's not an old guy holding a lantern but it is a guy holding a lantern and then he's being wrapped by the snake which is an obvious phallic symbol and then he has an erection which as far as i can tell is the only erection so far in this deck not sure why there aren't more visible erect penises, but um, I like that because um, one of the associations that I have with the hermit is, you know, he's spending time alone. So um, I often associate the hermit with um, masturbation in, in a um, erotic context. Hermit represents masturbation to me. So, um, so yeah, I mean, obviously he's not, you know, clearly masturbating in this picture, but um, I like the phallic imagery. I think it's very appropriate for the Hermit. The Wheel of Fortune, which is uh, a bunch of people intertwined as a, like a wreath sort of forming a wheel. And then they're on like a poker table or something, and then there's like poker chips and dice and stuff surrounding them. So, you know, Fortune, gambling, luck. And justice. Interesting justice. There's the scales. And each of the scales has a different, uh, different stuff in it. And again, there's another snake there, too. Um... She also has a big bouffant hairdo or some sort of hat or turban. And there is... Uh, oh, it's so small. There's a little circle that has the symbols of the four um, suits. Um, and then there is a yin-yang. I don't know if you can see that. But a uh, purple circle or blue or whatever color it is. As... Um, the four elements, which is so tiny you can't see it. And then there's a, a yin-yang. Yeah, there's justice. Um, and this is interesting. The hanged man is actually a hanged woman. 
And um, I do see this in um, tarot decks, and in fact, it's becoming more common, it seems, that more people are portraying the hanged man as a hanged woman. Um, sometimes, as in this case, they keep the title the same, hanged man. Sometimes they call it the hanged woman. Sometimes they, I, I don't know if anyone's called it the hanged person, or the hanged one, I think is one that I've seen. Um, so, yeah. The symbolism is still the same. It still represents the same thing. But again, there's a snake, too. I like the, the snakes in this deck. Interesting. And um, she's hanging from an ankh. Let's turn it. There we go. There's an ankh, the uh, Egyptian cross with the loop on top. I'm not sure how that uh, ties into the hanged man, but uh, I'll have to read the book. And, and, and death. This, <laughs> this is a strange death card. Um, there's this sort of, uh, weird demonic figure that looks like the, the, um, the guy from the Iron Maiden albums. What's his name? Eddie or something? The weird demonic guy on the, um, Iron Maiden albums. Um, comment down below if you know what I'm talking about, if you know what his name is. But, um, but yeah, and then there's a person or another demon emerging from her vagina, it looks like, or going into, I don't know. Um, but there's definitely something weird happening in this death card. Some sort of weird zombie demonic bullshit. <laughs> yeah. And then Temperance. And again we see the yin-yang, which is actually quite appropriate for temperance, because temperance is about balance. Um, but this woman is interesting. She's sitting on this, I don't know what it is, some sort of stone figure. Um, and then she's playing um, some sort of stringed instrument, which is, it looks like um, a shamisen, the Japanese stringed instrument. I don't think it is, but it looks very much like one. Um, and then she's in this pyramid thing. It's very fascinating. Yeah, so this temperance card, she's not pouring water in the cups. And the devil. And the devil is usually, for me, one of those make-or-break cards in a tarot deck. I mean, I have to love the devil card, or else it'll turn me off from the deck. Um, this is not my favorite devil card. It's also not my least favorite devil card. Um, but it is very dark and twisted and strange and demonic and hellish. There's just, you know, these faces down at the bottom here. And then there's these people here. And then, you know, the devil himself with the, the tongue and the horns. The horns are ve very phallic. I mean, of course they are. But, um, yeah, it's very strange. Very dark. Not enough penises. There needs to be more. Always more. Speaking of, the tower is a penis. And, of course, the people are falling from the tower. Um, there's fire and, you know, all that. But, yeah, yeah, lightning striking the penis tower. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, the tower represents, you know, destruction and, um, overturning and, uh, sudden change, um, you know, shaking things up, things of that nature, um, but I think, I mean, even in the RWS, um, the tower has a phallic, uh, um, significance, um, and I think the tower, I mean, you know, since it is the falling tower, um, in a sexual context, sort of maybe represents, um, erectile dysfunction, or, um, you know, um, uh, interrupted sex, like, you know, you don't get to finish because, bam, all of a sudden something happens, um, so yeah, the phallic tower, 
I mean, if I created a deck, I would create a phallic tower. I mean, obviously. Okay. Um, the star and the moon and the sun are similar, um, and you'll, you'll see why. But um, I find it interesting, or I don't know if interesting is the right word, but um, I find it confusing that she um, that she called you know the pentacles stars and then you have the star it doesn't make sense to me but I mean I can still distinguish between them but you know you see this beautiful female finger fi figure female figure uh, with you know light coming from her uh, vagina or genital area and that's the star, I guess. But that's very pretty. It's a very pretty card. And then, um... And then, the moon. The moon also has a person, but from behind. So, I mean, the ass is the moon, you know, get it? You're getting mooned. It's kind of funny. Moon ass. And there is the crab or crayfish. Are there like wolves or anything? I don't see any wolves or dogs or canines of any kind. But there is a weird demonic mouth there. I don't know. And the sun. And uh, and the sun. It's also a body from the front, except it's a man, and he really, I mean, his genitals are kind of, you know, cut off by the border, but, um, I can't tell if it's meant to be, you know, a penis and two testicles, or if it's three penises, because it almost looks like three penises. <laughs> it's so strange, I can't tell. Oh yeah, there's the, uh, the sun. Okay. And the last two cards, I don't know why she did this. I've never seen this before, ever. But the, um, we have the universe instead of the world. And then judgment is last. I don't know why. Um, I mean, the universe or the world represents, you know, completion of the journey. So I don't know why judgment would come after. Um, to me, the meaning of the card is still the same. It doesn't change just because it's in a different order. Um, for some people that matters. For me, it doesn't. So I can just ignore the number at the top of the card, and the card still means the same thing to me. But, um, yeah, there's some sort of... Um, astronomy type of thing here, stars, galaxies, um, astrology, zodiac symbols, planetary symbols, yeah, and the world, of course, you know, there's a globe right there with the symbols around it, so, I mean, it's still the world, it's just not called the world, and then judgment, um, which is interesting. There's a lion in the card. I don't know what the lion means. There are scales on the bottom. Um, and of course there's no, um, there's no angel, no people rising from the graves, which is fine with me because, I mean, I don't know. I understand that it's, the judgment is supposed to be, you know, like the Christian, um, sense of judgment, but, um, it has multiple meanings. But yeah, I don't know what the lion means. Actually, I'm going to look that up right now. Alright, let's see here. Let's see what we can find. The lion, the judgment. Okay. Um, judgment, the spiritual universe. Judgment believes in an afterlife, and so will fight to the death for an impossible cause. His influence strong with all people, especially influences sword personalities. Um, and then it has the upright, reversed, and preemptory. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about the imagery in the card. 
And in fact, it doesn't look like any of them do. Um, which is, oh, maybe, maybe maybe a couple of them do, like a little, like a little, like a sentence maybe. But yeah, yeah, it doesn't tell me anything about the imagery in the card, which is kind of disappointing. I would like to know why the choice of the lion. But um, but anyway, you know, it's up to interpretation as tarot is, and um. And I'll have to spend some time with the deck and see if I can pull anything out of it. But, um, but yeah, I like it. Um, and, in fact, I liked it so much and it's so rare that I actually bought two copies. So I have a, a backup, too. Um, and it's nice to find um, copies that are still um, shrink-wrapped. So I guess somebody had, like, stock of them somewhere, and, uh, you know, now they're selling them. So yeah, so that is the, um, the Tarot Erotica by Lori Walls. Um, and I'm glad that I did this walkthrough because I got to look at some of those cards a little bit closer than I did when I first looked through them. Um, and, and I'm seeing more things, so hopefully I'll spend more time with it and more will jump out at me and, uh, and you know, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you can find it, if you can find this deck, I encourage you to get it. If you can find any information on Lori Walls, because nobody seems to know who she is, and she doesn't seem to have done anything else um, in the tarot community. But if you can find anything about her, um, I would really like to know. I would like to know more about her, and I I would like to see if anybody can contact her and ask her about her deck, um, you know, any information about the images that she used, um, and also if there's any possibility that it could be reprinted in the future. I mean, that would just be lovely. I think, as far as erratic decks go, I think that this one definitely needs another run, um, and hopefully we'll get a, a better printing, you know, um, maybe a larger um, borderless version, I don't know, but hopefully, I'm, I'm dreaming now, but, you know, that would be nice, um, but, you know, I like the deck, and I hope you do too, um, let me know what you think, and, uh, until later, take care.